he proposed to me on his birthday on a yacht in Dubai. Hey, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Fiance. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, Motherfucker. Hey, I am Eloho, your favorite unicorn. <laughs> now, girl, 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 girl. I got a lot of explaining to do, okay? And I kind of took a break from coming on screen, but I had to come back on to share this story time with you guys. Your girl is a whole fiance, soon to be wife, mother, like went from mother to mother. Hold on, hold on, hold on, what? How are you all doing? I hope well. I hope y'all are getting through these pandemics as best as you can. I'm gonna jump right into this story time. You've seen the title, you see the glow, the excitement, right? So, boom. I know most of you guys want to know, did I know I was going to get engaged? Was it a surprise? Now, I date with intentions. After 25, I know, y'all thought I was y'all age. I'm not. But after 25, I was like, okay, I want to date with intentions. Like, whoever I'm dating, I'm looking to see, is this man husband material? Okay, I'm checking materials left and right. I don't want cotton. I don't want silk. I want husband, okay? That's the material that I'm looking for. But after 25, I'm like, okay, what do I want? I see myself between the ages of 30 and 33 married with twins. That's what, <laughs> That was the vision. Or married with triplets. That was the vision, right? Me dating with intentions, what does that look like? You know, some men get scared away by confident women who have a vision, who have a plan. But trust me, the right man, the right person will not be afraid of you having a vision. That person will actually find that highly attractive. I like to know, okay, this is the goal, right? I'm very goal orientated. So and the funny thing is when we met, I kept hearing husband, husband, husband. So I'm like, hold on, are you married? I asked him off rip, are you married? And he was like, no. He was like, if I was married, what would I be doing here? Cause we met at a lounge. And I'm like, I mean, so he shows me his phone. He shows me a camera of his driveway and he's like, look, like I'm not married. There's no other car here. I live by myself. Obviously he was from a kid. We went on several dates. He wined and dined me. I like that. And I let it be known. Like, listen, like my goal is to have an amazing career, you know, travel the world, find someone, fall in love, get married, have kids and do it all with them, with my, with our children. He, he explained that that's what he wants as well. So cool. So we already knew from the beginning, yes, we both are interested in finding the right person, getting married. So that was good to know. That was very comforting. Cause honestly, some guys that I've dated in the past, they didn't want to get married. Like they just, you know, I'm, honestly this generation, like a lot of people don't want to get married. And I can see why it's because they don't see marriage worthy or marriage material people that they're coming across. So I completely get people being like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna get married because the material is not there. And let me tell you, if God didn't show me this material, yeah, we wouldn't be here making this video because I'm not just gonna get married just for the sake of getting married. Like if I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with you, I need to trust you. I need to love you. We gonna get into that. <laughs> we were dating, things were going great. He met my family, my family loves him. I met his family, his family loves me. Everything was going great. And honestly, I'm like, okay, it's a matter of time because when you finna ask me? Now, by the first week, this man put his key in my hand. He said, you're my wife, this is your house. I started laughing. I'm like, yo, y'all African niggas is crazy. Like, I told my friends like, girl. Why he put his house key in my hand? So I'm like, all right, no, let's let's go slow. You know, sometimes in the beginning, everything is great, everything is great, but then shit go left. So I'm like, let's go slow. Like, I get it, I'm amazing, you want me all the time, but mm -mm, I got my own life, I got my own thing going on. Like, let's respect each other's space and boundaries. And then when we cross that bridge, we get to that bridge. But it was absolutely flattering, you know, that girl, that man gave me the key to his crib the first week, period. <laughs> that was a good ego boost for me. Like, wow, I'm really the woman that he's looking for. A couple years passed, but New Year's, was planning a trip to Paris and then to go to Senegal. And I'm like, okay, Paris, hmm, engagement. I'm thinking he's gonna propose to me in Paris this year. So I'm like, okay, we're going to Paris, he's gonna propose to me, but then I'm just like, do he know the ring styles that I want? Does he know the size of my fingers? Like I have long fingers. I'm like, but does he know the size? Does he know the size of my finger? Does he like does he know what I want? Like, I want a fairy tale. Is he prepared for that? He's a French African, so I'm like, okay, you know, French, he might be a little on the, you know, on that side, but after you live with, you know, you know a person, 
he's not that type of like super creative, super romantic type of guy. I'm like, hold on. We should be getting engaged like right, right around this time. It's been 84 years. You know? Um, so we went to Paris, we had an amazing trip, um, and then we went to Senegal. And I'm like, okay, so he didn't, he, okay. That's okay, let's, let's get back in the game. Let's get back in the game. So then for my birthday, we went to Mexico. For his birthday, we went to Dubai. Now, we go to Dubai often. It's like our favorite place to go as a couple. I heard what goes on in Dubai. That is insane to me because Dubai has such strict laws and rules. Like you literally can't just walk around in certain clothing. You cannot catcall women. So to hear that behind the scenes, you know, you know, it's, it's just crazy to me. And it's like, people were like, oh, you go to Dubai, you didn't hear what happened in Dubai. And I'm like, bro, do you hear what happened in Brooklyn? Like, stop playing with me. You know, what those sex workers do and people got their fetishes and they do what they do. That has nothing to do with me. You get what I'm trying to say? Nobody, I mean, nobody will ever literally nor figuratively shit on me. So we good, okay? So anywho, so we went to Dubai, had a great time and we're on a yacht. It's his birthday night. So we get on a yacht, it's absolutely beautiful. We got Afro beats playing, you already know the vibes. We got food, I'm just looking around, just sailing on the water, the buildings, the water show. He's enjoying himself, having a good birthday. So I'm taking selfies. Don't mind this phone. I'm taking selfies. He's like, mon chéri, mon chéri, come, come take pictures of me, come take pictures of me. So I'm like, dang, I didn't get no content. Like, I need content. So I'm trying to click. I'm like, okay, I'm coming. I'm trying to click. He's like, Moshadi, come take pictures of me. I'm like, all right. No content. <laughs> so I get up, I go over, and I see this open box on the front of the yacht. And it has a light projecting out of the box. So I just see this light in this little box. And I'm like, and then I look. The captain of the yacht is recording. And I see him smiling and then he gets on one knee and he asked me to be his wife. And I was just like, yo, what? Like you proposing to me on your birthday? Who does that? He proposed to me on his birthday on a yacht in Dubai. Hey, it's just, oh my God, it was just, it was just so perfect. So I said, yes, of course. And we went out that night, had dinner. I was just glowing. Like I could not stop smiling. Like literally from the day we got engaged to now, I literally, like even if I'm not physically smiling, like my heart is smiling. Like I cannot stop <laughs> smiling. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna get into some of you guys' questions. This isn't a question, but I just wanna say I'm really happy for you and I think you deserve it. Thank you. Um, how did you guys meet? Or how did you know he was the one? So that's a really good question. Like I said, we did meet at a lounge. Um, but how did I know he was the one? There were several ways that I knew that, yes, this is definitely the man for me, the man that I want to spend my life with, even before the engagement. Number one, I listen to my body. Your body will tell you a lot <laughs> if you really listen and pay attention to the signs. Entering um, 2020, I had really bad anxiety. I had lost like 40 pounds. I was stressed. I was depressed. I was going through a lot. Um, of emotional trauma, emotional and spiritual trauma. So when I got around him, my anxiety literally disappeared. My body told me that I am safe around this person. The other signs, very big on a masculine man, a protector, someone who can protect me physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. I want protection. And he checked off all of those boxes as a protector. I manifested that. People told me he didn't exist. Watch this. <laughs> God was like, watch this. I love to cook, I love to clean, but I also wanted someone who can do those things for me. I started to gain happy weight. That was another sign because before I was drunk, I was losing it, okay? I was losing it before. And I started to get, I got a little booty now, all of that, you feel me? So 
the happy way started to come in. I felt comfortable, I felt protected. I literally wanted a builder. Like when I talk about like, go build something, like go build, you know what I'm trying to say? Like he's literally a builder. This man built my bathroom from scratch. I told him what type of bathroom I wanted. He built my bathroom from scratch. We went to the tile shop. We picked out tiles together. I'm like, I want a light, marble. He's in my office. And honestly, that was just so attractive to me as well. Somebody that could take my vision and make it a real reality like oh this is what you want this is what you're going to get like this is what you like yeah that's what you deserve let me give you that oh girl get that girl get where they do that at? Another way how I knew was because my family accepted him off the rip. They just go together like peanut butter and jelly. He met my parents and I called my mom that night. I was like, so what do you think about him? She's like, oh, he's wonderful. And now they're the best of friends. I just, I be like, babe, you can't be telling mommy everything. Like we gotta keep, yeah, no, don't do that. Okay, so someone says, I remember you mentioned your fiance is Muslim. Are you converting? No, I'm not converting. I've always respected Islam. I started learning about Islam when I was, I would say 18 or 19. Um, one of my friends, her mother converted to Islam and I would go over to the house and she would be, you know, just talking to me about what they believe, what the Quran says. And I always respected that because I'm like, this makes sense though. Like nothing that I didn't believe already. You call your God this, I call my God that. Was your family or your friends closely involved in the engagement planning process? No. He got permission from my parents. They gave him the blessing. He went ahead and did it. How long have you and your fiance been together? So we've been together for two years. We started dating in 2020 um, and it's now 2022. So how did you guys meet? P.S. It's been great to see how far you came. Thank you so much. Yes, we met at a lounge. So I go, I'm all the way dressed up to the nines. Looks the facts and the T, like real, real, real life. I'm dressed up all the way to the nines. I pull up and I'm like, oh baby, you ain't in Kansas no more. What, it, what are those? Like the fashions was not there. I'm just being honest, okay? I'm like, Eloho, you all the way dressed up and still giving sexy, but these people are giving nothing. I'm at the bar waiting for Chi Chi to get there. And he pulls up on me and he's looking at me and we start having conversations. I'm just like, first thing I noticed is child, he is black like this gel. And y'all know I like that. The melanin was just glowing on me. He was just such a gentleman and such a charmer. We had great conversations. Are you going to do your traditional marriage or just your white wedding? So for those of you who don't know, most Africans do two weddings. We do a wedding called the traditional wedding and then we do the white wedding, which is when you wear your white dress. So I'm actually doing both. Yes, I will be doing the traditional Urubo wedding and then we will be doing the white wedding. Now, the weddings are this year. The weddings are this year. Okay, so I, <laughs> it's been a lot. It's, it's been a journey. It's been stressful, but shout out to my team, my sister, AKA my planner, Janabi. Shout out to my maid of honor, AKA my other planner, Talana. Girl, shout out to my mama, all my cousins and my dressmakers in Nigeria. Like every, it's, it's gonna be. <sighs> <laughs> will you be doing your own makeup absolutely not the day of my weddings <laughs> the day of my weddings i will not be doing my makeup i want to be pampered i don't want to do nothing but smile say i do um eat and just you know just enjoy that moment and just look around at all the people that love us that support us and just really pray for a beautiful journey together. That's that's all I want to do. I don't want to do nothing else. Congratulations. I've been watching you for three years. I'm just so proud of you. You're my big sis. Thank you so much. What country is your man from? He's from Mali. That's a really good question. I would say it's pretty medium, but the fact that it's two, it's pretty big. And then are you splurging on your honeymoon? So we definitely want to go to Bali. I love the fact that we both love to travel, see the world. So... We're planning Bali, God willing, if the world is not, God, it's a lot happening around the world. So we'll see, but we're planning for Bali. What was your first thought when he proposed? Were you scared or nervous when this happened? My first thought was what? On your birthday? <laughs> That's what I really could not get over because I love my birthday and I don't want to share my birthday. When I find out other people, birthday is March 11th, I'll be like, 
town. Like, I don't want to share my birthday with nobody. So the fact that I have my birthday, he has his birthday, but I also have his birthday because that's our engagement date. <laughs> so then she said, were you scared or nervous? Now, I feel like the fear and the nerves, it started happening once we started talking about planning. Because now I'm like, oh shit, this is permanent. Oh, this is a big big investment this is a big commitment of the big commitment right the wedding your marriage oh <laughs> i was like oh my god this is what every woman wants well not every but this is what a lot of women want and then you just start asking okay is this the right person am i the right person what about this what about that like you just start really getting butterflies and nerves i would say yes Definitely got the butterflies. How was the transition from dating your partner to living with him and now being engaged? What lessons did you learn? Oh my God, that's a good one. What adjustments did you both have to make and what mistakes did you make? Damn, this was deep, okay. <laughs> so once we started living together, which I know most people don't recommend living with your partner and it really is up to you. Like, because on, on one hand, it is like if you live with the person, then they kind of get used to you being there. They get used to a routine and then some people feel like, well, there's no point in getting married because you're really you're already doing all of this stuff. You're living here. Um, I think it's just important to just to, to communicate that the goal is marriage if you are living with your partner. The transition for me, um, I feel like it was seamless, but like the cleanliness. You're a woman and you're living in a man's space is different than being a, a woman and living in your own space, right? You might do your makeup and leave a few things on a counter, maybe, you know, brushing out your hair and it's hair on the floor. Like for me, it was just a note like, okay, you're living with a man, you know, put your makeup away <laughs> sweep your wig hairs <laughs> sweep your wig hairs i'm watching him he's watching me so cleanliness have to be on another level if you're living with a if you're if you're a clean person and you're living with a clean person your cleanliness it takes a, a higher notch because nobody wants to live with a dirty person right one of the lessons that i definitely learned because you know that song she's a runner she's a track star she gonna run away when it get hard yeah that song was written for me i usually run like if it's getting hard if it's if it's too if it's uh, 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 uh yeah let me go out let me go uh let me go home i mean uh, i'm out fight or flight but when you're living with someone you're serious about you have to have those hard conversations you can't just be like oh all right whatever you say i'm out and then maybe text them or call them later, you know? So for me, talk, like what happened? You know, you're not going nowhere. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk it out. Let's be adults. What's going on? What's the issue? Yeah, growing up, like growing pains, literally. What adjustments did you both have to make? Honestly, it was pretty seamless. I don't think we had to make much adjustments. Any of the adjustments that needed to be done, he was really glad to do. Like I said, I work from home, so I need an office. Like if I'm living here, if we're living together, I need a space where I can have my privacy. I can come on camera and do this, right? Do my work. So he's like, oh, let's just make you an office. So we have eight rooms. So we just made one of the rooms my closet, one of the rooms my office. So that is all for this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. There's so many questions. We might have to do a part two, girl. But yes, this is my life. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you at the next one. Later. The Honey Pot is the first complete plant-derived vaginal care system funded by CEO Patrice Dixon. They have an array of products that are gynecological approved, clinically tested, and shown to be kind and safe on intimate skin. They send over everything that I need to support vaginal wellness, such as pads made with 100% organic certified OCS cotton cover, including herbal pads infused with mint, lavender, and aloe for a cooling, and I mean cooling, sensation sis and of course you can't forget the wipes and wash to gently cleanse while supporting a balanced ph range i personally use the wash every single time i shower and i've had no issue i also really love the wipes i take them with me when i'm traveling or when i'm spending the night out definitely come in handy as you know wipe from front to back not back to front
Go ahead and rebalance your pH from the inside out with Honey Pot 7 Day Boric Acid and Herbs Suppositories. Many people also use boric acid vaginal suppositories to support the ongoing symptoms of BV. The Honey Pot's mission is to educate, support, and provide people around the world with the tools and resources that promote menstrual health and vaginal wellness. The Honey Pot offers an extensive range of wellness products for humans with vaginas and can be found across the nation in select stores including Target. Target, Walmart, and more. Be sure to also follow them on Instagram and check out thehoneypot.com for more information on ingredients and products.